Hey guys, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. Wanted to do an update, kind of give you a panorama of the view of the deck down below and show you what's been changing. I'm not going to do a yard walk today because, as you can tell, there's tons of power tools being used in people's yards, I guess, clean up for Father's Day before their family and everybody gets there. There's one of the, uh, the potatoes uh, towers. Let me get a little bit of a different zoom here angle. That's going to be the uh, garbage can sweet potato. That's one of them. And there's another one back over there. You might be able to see a little bit of it back there. So they're both on this side. Then there's another one right over there behind the uh, peach tree. So we've got them kind of hidden and blended in. And so when they start to actually vine over, they'll hide that can with the sweet potato vines. So it won't be such an eyesore sitting there. But until, you know, they actually start to root and get, we're supposed to get the slips this week. And then they should start growing, you know, within the next few weeks. And, really take off because we're going to put eight slips in each one of those. So we're going to have vines going over all the sides. So that should give us, you know, quite a bit of sweet potato growth in there. You know, even if it's not as much as I would like, it's something I'm going to try here in Oregon. You can see all of the uh, squash out there. It looks pretty healthy. We harvested our first three eggplants off the Michael F1 eggplant. Boy, they were good. Paul made a sautéed vegetable dish last night. And we had that with some... Uh, vegetarian bean patty I don't know what you call them there's something that she gets from you know organic and they're, they're actually pretty good for being a, a, a vegetarian you know I guess simulated burger patty <laughs> and we got the tomatoes they're doing really well you can see there's some more squash down there that needs to be harvested already there's a bunch back in there that you can kind of maybe see behind the cover crop that's growing in the front the peas are really banging I mean look at them I mean, they're, you know, huge, tall, and there's tons of peas. That's one of the things I need to go do this morning after I'm done doing the videos, is pick the peas. We're going to serve that as part of our Father's Day meal. We've ate our few first red tomatoes that I mentioned last week back there. And let's see. Let's go this way. Sunflowers seem to be doing pretty well. See all the wildflowers are really starting to come in. Let's give you a general panorama of what we got going. Oh, I gotta, gotta just love power tools, especially on a weekend. There's the apple tree. I don't know if I talked about that last week, how I strapped that down. I'm basically going to train that one top to go sideways as a side support branch and then just have the one top going up. So I'm going to train that one to be bent over because you don't want to leave a V crotch that's that tight with two sides because I figure next year when that tree actually starts to fruit, it's going to have fruit on the one top and it would have had fruit on the other top and it could have actually took the tree and split it right down the middle. That's what been a bad thing for that tree. I don't want to lose it. So now we have a, a nice top to be able to form, and it's actually going to curve this way, away from the, uh, the peach tree here. So it's going to keep that nice spacing. And that one there, I'm going to, you know, I haven't determined if I'm going to keep that thing or not, because it always just has these sickly looking leaves, and no matter how much compost tea I spray on that thing, it always just looks like it's like, you know, a little turd. So I may actually cut that one off down there on the rootstock and graft on some of the uh, Asian pear there this winter when I do my grafting. So I don't want to lose that rootstock. So it's got a good, you know, developed rootstock, but you know that pear, it's just, uh, I just can't stand things when they look sicker like that. No matter how much effort you put into the dang thing. At some point you just gotta say, you know, pee or get off the pot. <laughs> you're gonna survive on your own and you're gonna do it on your own merits without any kind of babysitting. Alright, well that's kind of the look of the yard right now. Oh, the apples down there really look nice. I mean, that, that gala, gala apple. It does have some of the, uh, the leaf rust on it, but you know, I mean, that's to be expected. I mean, if this was an orchard and I could get out here and I could clean up all the leaves at the end of the fall, I'd probably avoid a lot of these problems that I have in my trees. But considering I'm doing a beyond or better than organic yard that's based on permaculture principles, I leave everything in the yard, let it rot and drop, and 
just try to do it like nature does. And at some point, you know, I'm hoping that I'll have enough nutrients and base inside this soil that even if there is any kind of fungicides or fungal growths, they're actually going to be counteracted by all the beneficials that are in the yard. So that way I won't have to do all the spraying and, you know, maintenance. I mean, and I'm not spraying chemicals that, you know, are bad for the environment. I'm basically spraying naturals that, you know, like neem oil is a natural. And then also, you know, my compost tea, which is basically, you know, fish fertilizer, uh, seaweed extract, molasses, all mixed together and then bubbled inside of my bubbling system that I've shown you guys out there on before. But uh, that's kind of it for the yard this week. All right, I'll talk to you guys again. I hope you had a great Father's Day. Bye, guys.